Good evening, everyone. Packed house tonight. It's a good thing. Welcome to the regular meeting of your Danville City Commission for tonight, March 27th. I believe we have a quorum, so I will, I will call us officially to order. And I will ask that um, Commissioner Cottle, Sir? would you mind leading us in prayer, please? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I know you and the Almighty are tight. He can. <laughs> Father of all, we appreciate the time to gather here in complete freedom. Uh, we appreciate those who have made this possible. Uh, we have troops overseas and others who find themselves away from home protecting our freedoms. And tonight we would just ask that um, we remember that we're all neighbors. We're all striving for the same thing and that we pray that we conduct ourselves in a way that's pleasing to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Caudill. Excellent prayer on such short notice. <laughs> I won't do that again. That's all. <laughs> um, we have with us tonight um, a fine young gentleman who's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. His name is Henry Sheen. Mr. Sheen, if you'll come up. I'm going to put this microphone on you, all right? Okay. Yeah, turn right around there and let's go. Attention. Oh, oh. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, indivisible republic with which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all very well done young man and right over here commissioner atkins has has something for you we thank you buddy did good i thought we were going to have a 21 gun salute there for a minute he he, 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 he got it going on thank you henry Good job. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was out to support his big sister and you put him to work. Good job. Did a good job. Yes. Um, you have before you tonight's agenda, unless uh, otherwise, uh, I will assume it meets your approval. And we'll move on to hear the public. This is the section of the evening where we um, open up the microphone to hear the public on any topic that is on tonight's agenda. There will be an opportunity later on in the meeting for hear the public on any topic that might not be on tonight's agenda. So, anything from, from uh, the public on tonight? Please take the microphone. Hello. I'm Lori Kagan Moore, and I'm the owner and operator of the Great American Dollhouse Museum. Um, but I'm here on behalf of the Creative District of Kentucky and the Arts Partners. And this is uh, with regard to uh, agenda item eight, uh, wayfinding. Um, I'm here representing the Creative District and the Art Partners. We comprise many of the larger cultural and arts organizations in Danville. We're glad to see that some activity may be moving forward on wayfinding signage, uh, which is listed on today's agenda as needing action. But we have been offered no information about what is going forward. As major stockholders in the wayfinding outcome, we would respectfully ask the commission to allow us to be brought up to date on today's request before any abiding decisions are reached. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Anyone else? Seeing not, we'll move right into our general area. Item one is the approval of the minutes of the previous meetings for March 13 and March 15. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you, gentlemen. Any discussion? Any amendments? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Sears, Commissioner Cobb, we got that. Um, 
If there's no other, I'll, I'll chair will call the question. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item two is a proclamation for the Danville High School Forensics Team and State Championship. And both folks, raise your hand. All right. Let me get all of you all to come down front here. Yeah. Let everybody see you. Why are you sitting there, sir? <laughs> You're the coach, Mr. Meadows, please. You can receive this on behalf of your team. The good doctor. <laughs> Whereas the Damel High School forensics team had an outstanding year representing Damel High School and the community, the City Commission would like to congratulate them on their many accomplishments and whereas the Danville High School forensics team completed a clean sweep of the four state speech tournaments with the win at the Kentucky District of the National Speech and Debate Association contest held at Center College on March 17 and 18 while taking first in speech team and second in Congress also winning the district's traveling trophy and whereas three Dama High School students qualified to represent Kentucky at the largest academic contest in the world, the National Speech and Debate Association's tournament in June of 2017, and whereas DHS Forensics also won the state speech tournament for the second straight year, with three students being named state champions in their events, and whereas the team began March with its 21st straight win of the annual national qualifier for the Grand Nationals, advancing 12 entries to the national tournament, which will be held in May of 2017, and whereas with their win at the KESDA Forum in February, DHS became only the third in Kentucky history to win all four of these contests in the same year and remains the only Kentucky school to ever win all four, and whereas the team players are outstanding role models of the youth of Danville and Boyle County. All of the members are applauded for their exemplary attitude and their contributions to education. And whereas the Danville High School forensics team members are shining examples of focus and dedication to be the best they can be as a team, coming together to accomplish great things, they are to be commended. Now, therefore, Mayor G. Michael Peros and the city commissioners of the city of Danville on this 27th day of March 2017, do hereby congratulate the Danville High School forensics team on their outstanding accomplishments and encourage the citizens of Danville to congratulate them on their success and representation of Danville, Kentucky at all upcoming events. Congratulations, sir. Would you like to say a few words? So you can't pass up a chance to be at the microphone. Um, the work of these students is exceptional, but it also should be noted that the leadership provided to these students, the critique and so forth, comes from the staff of the Dam schools. Ms. Branson, Mr. Meadows, I'm sure there are others here. Do you want to introduce your other coaches that are also present? It would be great. Say yes or no. Somebody give me an answer here. Better than good. You're excellent. Y'all gonna wear these tomorrow. You know? Fair enough. So, again, thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Atkins. Nice to be able to have alumnus in, in various places as well. That's part of our work and students as well. This was fantastic. It's clean sweep again to be the only school in the state ever to do this, and the fact that we've done this now three times um, definitely sets the bar beyond anything else for us to chase. So, good job. Good luck. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity. Thank you all for acknowledging our staff.
and I can say, I'm sorry, picture, where are you going? Get back up here. Who's taking picture? You taking picture? I'm trusting Ben. Good point. Now don't anybody move. Okay? Starting here. Introduce yourself, and if your parents are in the audience, introduce them too. Uh, I'm Abigail Anderson, and that lady over there is my mom, Kate. <laughs> right. I'm Billy Critchfield. My parents, James Stewart, are over there in the audience. Raise your hand, y'all. There you go. I'm Katie Critchfield, and my parents are also Future forensic specialist, I can tell. Um, I'm Claire, and my parents are Karen and Michael over there. I'm Kyle, Dee, and it's my mom. I'm Lily Hale, and my mom is Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank you for representing the community. Well done. doing student government. All right. Um, there are you gentlemen in the back row. Hi, guys. Um, tell me, stand up, give your name, and tell everybody why you're here. Spectate. How about you, young folks, up here in the front? You, sir? I'm <laughs> He's the chauffeur. And behind so. you. <laughs> well, 
Well, we hope you learn something. I'm not sure what it would be. But. <laughs> give them a test after the meeting. Something yeah, about te the test after the test meeting. Test after the meeting, yeah. so don't leave early. Something about the effects of government on the environment. Is that? Our local issues are discussed. Okay. Thank you all for coming. There you go. Been Glad to have you. Hope you come back. <coughs> but a nice segue, Commissioner Terry, to the next agenda item, right? There you go. The next agenda item is the proclam. I'm uh, sorry, the. Um, City. Yeah. Well, we're, well, we're skipping that. Yeah. The resolution 2017-03-27-01. Um, this is the Plant the Planet grant application. Professor Weston. So I'm happy to have an environmental issue for you all to follow. And I'll give you some background on this. Um, we are in the middle of what I hope is a 10-year project to plant 500 trees downtown. This is year three, and we planted 50 trees on 2nd and 3rd Street and we get the money a year in advance. So last fall, we collected from citizens, the Garden Club, just regular folks, $5,000. We asked the Kentucky Utilities Foundation to give us a matching grant, which they have done. So I come tonight to bring you the good news that we received this grant and to ask you to formally receive it so that the city may spend money and plant trees sometime. Now normally we plant in November. This year it wasn't really cold in November or December, or January. So we were a little late getting our trees in, but this fall's planting is what this money is for. And I, uh, you have before you, I think, the resolution. Uh, so I ask you to receive it. Um, do, I hear, do I hear a motion? I move to approve resolution 2017-03-2701. Thanks, Commissioner Terry. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Commissioner Atkins. Any discussion? Just thanks to Oh, for spearheading this over the last couple of years. Uh, well, it is very gratifying to be a busybody in a community where people like to contribute. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we do appreciate it. And for for you folks out there, this is $5,000 he's worked hard for us for. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. All right. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Very Thanks, Bob. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Item five, Mr. Scott, your report, please. My report uh, will be uh, brief in that we had a special hearing, a, a public meeting ahead of this meeting to talk about budget issues. My work as uh, city manager and the staff at this time of the year is largely geared towards preparing and recommending to the city commission a budget for consideration and subsequent adoption for the fiscal year uh, beginning July 1. For our student observers tonight, I would just mention that um, in the current fiscal year, the year July 1 through June 30th that we operate, our guiding philosophy has been to uh, uh, strive to provide efficient and effective service. We have initiated a number of uh, initiatives uh, to uh, try to be uh, more environmentally friendly and to be green. One of those is our energy efficiency project where we've had for the past year or longer a, a contractor come in and look at uh, the energy usage and cost of all our public uh, facilities and to identify those that we could uh, save uh, money uh, by replacing. And under, under the terms of the uh, state law, uh, the city can enter into an agreement, which we're intending to do tonight uh, if the commission approves, to uh, contract with a private contractor to replace our heat and, and cooling elements and so forth to upgrade outdated equipment uh, in order to, over time, save the cost of that uh, uh, equipment replacement with uh, energy savings. So that has been a big uh, effort of the cities during the past year. Uh, we um, did not have any uh, revenue increase last year. We've worked towards uh, uh, funding a number of studies that will lead to better outcomes uh, in the future. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that if I may, uh, other than noting, Mr. Mayor and Commission, that as we indicated in our earlier meeting, uh, the probability is that a special call meeting will be held April 13th uh, to be the next budget uh, meeting where we will consider the uh, amended budget of the Economic Development Partnership as well as the uh, request made previously by the uh, 
city county agencies and the community agencies uh, with the goal being to uh, reach agreement on those items uh, April 13th so that on April 27th uh, I will be able to present to the City Commission for uh, their consideration in compliance with state law a budget for the next fiscal year which is balanced in terms of revenue and expenditure. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Any questions of Mr. Scott to Mr. Scott? Seeing none, we'll move right into commissioner comments. Oh, excuse me, sorry, sorry. Here's the public. And this is the section where you're free to speak about any subject that's on your mind. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Jane Brantley. I'm a citizen of downtown Danville. Um, I would just like at, at some meeting soon to have an update on the progress of Whissaker Park uh, and the water wall and the benches and the trees and the flagpoles and the tulips are gorgeous. Thank you to the folks that planted them. So it, it would be interesting to see how we're moving along on that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's a timely idea. Anyone else? Now we're in commissioner comments, if there are any. So um, a week or so ago, um, three of us got to meet the uh, mayor from Carrick Fergus, Ireland, our sister city. And our mayor was very envious of um, her uh, necklace that she wears. I don't know what to call I'm it. A <laughs> That shows her. So, uh, so we 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 got him one. Very appropriate. Yes. Yeah. So, there you go, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. It's um, it's it's, it's quite sparse compared to hers. Yes. It is. Yes. Yes. But then, yeah. so are you compared to her. Sorry, right, cute. <laughs> you got one coming. I, I, that's I that's actually it. better than what I was going to get you. I was going to get you some candy necklaces. <laughs> I, I couldn't find any. I even sent Miss Joyce out to find some. I couldn't find any. I think you uh, sabotaged us with the candy necklaces. I know necklaces. where this came from. <laughs> this came from Kevin when he was in a drag queen costume contest. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Good, good. <laughs> just once, and I needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> so at least for today, you can feel important. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. And you high school kids, be sure to leave leave that out of your report, right? <laughs> that was interesting, though, that they had those things, and and they actually wore. And they have twenty people on their council. Forty. Forty. Forty, 40, 40 people 40 on the council. Forty. And she, did you see the robe that she has to wear? No, I did not see the robe. I, I mean, <laughs> but you it, know how she controls the meetings. It, it's a robe that would make Don King envious. I'm gonna tell you, it's this great big huge thing. And between the necklace and the robe, I don't know how she gets around. Yeah, I don't know how to get anything done with forty. Yeah. Members. No. But she controls the microphones. That's how she. That's how she gets stuff done. Yeah, she can shut you down. Yeah, she can shut you down. She's a very lovely lady, and so is her husband. Yeah. Oh, the mayor can't shut us down? No. Oh, okay. No, no, not you all. Uh, not you all. Alex can shut us down. On a more serious note, though, I'd like to invite the, the commission and the community to uh, a black college and career fair that's taking place at Danville High School on Saturday, April the 15th of this year. Uh, 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the Danville High School lobby. And what makes this uh, unique and different is that all of the presenters behind the tables are going to be Danville High School, Bull County High School, Mercer County High School, and area high school graduates. So these are people who have walked the halls of your schools who are coming back because that's uh, Easter weekend and they're going to give her their time to talk about their high school days, their college days, and their successful careers, and also allow our students and young adults and 
those non-traditional students to do some networking. So it's uh, open to the community. Uh, but we think it's time for our graduates to be invited back to the area to share with current students about their success stories. So please uh, try to attend. Admission is free. There, it's from 10 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. And uh, there are door prizes, uh, lots of Visa and MasterCard gift cards to incite the youth as well as their parents to attend. Okay. What day, the 15th, did you say? 15th, that's the Saturday, and that's, a, you know, that's usually tax day, but you get until the 17th this year to get them done, so don't use that as an excuse for staying home. So come out, Danville High School, and uh, really welcome back home some of our former high school graduates who are now, like I say, college graduates and military folks and judges and lawyers and doctors and dentists, and it's just amazing the names who've been uh, presented to this committee to ask about coming back. And uh, we're calling it a day of an opportunity to pay it forward. So they've all that's been in contact have said yes so far. Okay. I'd like to remind the commission of uh, uh, County Attorney Richard Campbell's uh, retirement party, which will be at the courthouse on um, April 30th. March 31, excuse me, from two to four um, after a, a nice long career. And then on Saturday, um, it, it was rescheduled, but Saturday will be the annual park cleanup, which will take place uh, at Constitution Square from nine until whenever. Anything else from anybody? Sure, I'd like to make. <laughs> there we go. You know, it's always a proud moment for us uh, here in the city commission when we get to uh, to see that what's happening with our youth out there, as we did today with a forensics team, and we've done it here in the last few weeks with a bowling team from Boyle County and several other groups. I'm not going to go through them all, but. I want to do a shout out uh, uh, to those folks as an adult community that have been former mayors and city commissioners that are still involved in some of our committees around town. Uh, Janet Hamner right here, Beautification Committee. We have several uh, folks on the Architectural and Heritage uh, Board. Um, so I think that says well for our community that we stay involved and we try to progress it well. So I'm doing a shout out to them. Anything else? Seeing none, we'll move right to the payment of the bills. Do I hear a motion to approve the payment of the bills as presented? I move to pay the March 27, 2016 uh, bill list. Uh, March 27, 2017, $140,061.85. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. How about second. a second? Mr. Cottle, any discussion, any amendments, corrections? Seeing none, I call the question. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 7 is the first reading of ordinance number 1893. This is the 2017 budget amendment. Ms. Gosser. Yes, you have before you ordinance number 1893, amendment to the 2016-2017 budget. We, we are asking you to amend as the drug forfeiture fund. We want to increase it by $10,000 in order to uh, purchase more um, equipment in that fund. That will be paid for out of the reserves that it holds in itself. And this is a very restricted fund, and these items are allowed. And that amount is how much? $10,000, the extra um, budget amendment. I see on here we've got an underlined 20. Yes, you... it was already 10,000. We've, we've increased it 10,000 to 20. I got it. I move for approval of ordinance 1893. Second. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Connell. Second, Commissioner <laughs> Terry. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Chair, call the question. All in favor of um, <coughs> first reading of ordinance 1893 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 8 is resolution 2017-032702, wayfinding signage. Mr. Coffey. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. You have in front of you the resolution 2017-032702, which uh, confirms the selection of Carmen 
as the highest ranked firm and authorizes staff to proceed with the final contract negotiation with them to bring back to you in two weeks. I'll move to accept resolution number 2017-03-2702. Thank you, Commissioner Sears. How about a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Discussion? Uh, yeah, I need to give, ask Mr. Coffey to give us a little uh, background information about how we've uh, progressed to this point for the community to be updated. Thank you. This was an initiative we've, we've been discussing for some time in concert with several uh, groups, the Arts District, for example, that have, have made a request to improve our signage, our wayfinding signage specifically. Um, and this hires a consultant, to con a consultant to consolidate all the interest in, and to develop what, what we call a master plan for all of our signage, our wayfinding signage, so that you have some uh, uh, comprehensive uh, look to identifying all of your your key locations, your downtowns, your your business areas on the bypass to uh, maximize the efficiency of traffic movement directions for people out of town to get to town to get to their goals. Center College, for example. Um, so this this consolidates that effort into a single consultant and proceeds. And as a part of this process, I guess uh, I guess Mrs. Kagan Moore was at the mic a minute ago and asked for. I guess some continued involvement and input from local stakeholders. Correct, and and we we had identified stakeholders about a year ago or so. Now maybe yeah, about a year ago, and we we uh, had a a really a meeting to gather ideas, to gather input, and really that that confirmed the need to hire the expertise and to do a, a ma what what we would call a master plan, and so. We are now getting to that work. And I noticed from the master plan that there are at least two uh, community workshops on there, so the public will be invited to weigh in. And that is correct. Yep. Yeah. Any further questions? Well, and I, and I guess we need this for the public information. This was a, a bid process. It was an RFP process. We had two respondents. We had Kohler and Associates out of Cincinnati. Carmen is out of Lexington, although John Carmen is from here locally. Uh, he he works in, and makes an effort to respond to a lot of our, our RFPs like this and certainly seems qualified for the work as demonstrated by his proposal. Um, his fees tied to his proposal was about $27,000, so certainly is a reasonable cost considering the work that, that he is proposing uh, that we'll have done. Anything further? Yeah, and this seems to tie in well with some other things that we have going on. Uh, we're actually completing the branding and uh, economic development process that we're going through. And, and uh, it was mentioned earlier today, the Parks and Rec uh, uh, study that we hope to pass tonight, or maybe some don't hope to pass, but I think that we will. But it all sort of ties in nicely as far as I can tell. It does, and your signage uh, has has developed over time. Uh, we don't want to call it a hodgepodge because individually, the sign that is out there does good for the individuals that do do have signage. Not all your your key um, interests have signage out there, and so what what the goal is is to maximize and minimize at the same time. Maximize information while minimizing the sign clutter that's out there, and and so that you do have effective wayfinding, effective directional. Uh, information being provided to pedestrians, vehicular, uh, all around town, regardless of the direction or the entry point to town. Are we going to, are we supposed to be at these workshops that are coming up? Yes, there, there will be a series of workshops. It, it will be an extended effort. Uh, the commission will have input, the stakeholders groups will have input, and, and it will be a uh, a logical process that that will you'll see a draft plan then and then you'll ultimately be asked to approve a final plan prior to any implementation and then of course you'll have to fund it at some point as we go through through the process signage isn't isn't free and so we'll we'll have to uh, develop a strategy that that the existing signage gets replaced the new signage gets put in and and that will involve you all tied to the money right. it'd be a big investment 
Does any of the signage, uh, and I know this is probably a question for later, but you may already know the answer, does any of that become state funded? First? There's a portion that the state has discussed that they would be, uh, that would be eligible expenses for those guys. And there were additionally some, some money raised locally for uh, signage for other groups. The Art Center, for example, I think had some funds that they wanted to use at one time. And so we'll go through the process and then we'll see where the state can pay, what the state can pay for, what, what ultimately would fall on the city commission. And private citizens can contribute as well, right? Correct. So, do I hear a motion? Are we doing a motion? Yeah. We did? Okay. Any, any, any further comments? <laughs> Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of the uh, resolution 2017-03-2702, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Next item is resolution 2107. Was that a typo, Madam Clerk? <laughs> 2017, oh, y'all thought I was asleep, see. 2017, 03, 27, 03, this is the Park Master Plan Engineer Contract Approval. Again, Mr. Coffey, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Again, you have in front of you the resolution which accepts the provided contract with Grand Sarah Carroll to conduct the master planning for the city's parks and rec facilities and program i'll offer a motion to approve uh, resolution 2017-03-27-03 second thank you commissioner atkins and commissioner Sirius. we are in discussion if there is any <laughs> we've kicked this around for a long time so yeah for the benefit of, of the young folks here we've discussed this for quite a while so you're not going to hear a whole lot more today i don't think but, well, uh, and, and, and I think it would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that this is a, a uh, leadership effort by the city um, to further plan for the joint development of our parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, and when the city engineer talks about it's a master plan for parks and rec, it, it, it really, in my mind, is a master plan for the city. Um, so don't think about softballs and and uh, soccer fields alone. We're talking about trails and we're talking about other little nice parks. And some of those things are already happening. We ought to see a nice park over at the water plant here before too long. But nonetheless, uh, this is an effort to make sure that we're spending our money wisely, which was mentioned by the city manager in an earlier conversation. So It also includes the neighborhood parks. That was not included in the previous plan which is now almost 30 years old. So that's, that's a long time. Um, and the park was open nearly 20 years ago. So it's, it's time. And it's important for us to state that this uh, resolution has a $50,000 price tag associated with it. Which was negotiated down from 77? Yeah. But a, a nice investment for a plan to consolidate our efforts. Anything further? Seeing none, Chair, call the question. Call for the vote. All in favor of resolution 2017-03-2703, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 10 is the second reading of Ordinance 1892. This is in regard to code enforcement, fines, and liens. Is there any discussion that needs to occur with, with that? I'll offer a motion to approve Ordinance 18, 1892. Yes, sir. Second. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Atkins, seconded by Commissioner Terry. This is the second reading. Uh, Madam Clerk. Um, this is Ordinance 1892, an ordinance replacing Chapter 1, Section 1 through 12, General Penalty Continuing Violations of the City of Danville Code or of Ordinances with the new Section 1-12 one, one titled General Code Enforcement authorizing code enforcement officers to issue remedial order, citation, and assess fines for code violations. 
I want to commend staff for their efforts. This has been an ongoing process, and I sure hope it's going to help us. Public input's been good on this. Yes. I have one quick question. If, uh, because someone asked me, and I think I passed it along, about the uh, appeals process, could you just real quickly touch on who, who they can be appealed to and what that process is? An alleged violator has two choices. They can pay a reduced fine within a specified time period and it's over. If they appeal um, the process, they would be appealing to Boyle District Court. And then after their hearing, if they were found to be in violation of the city ordinance, then they would be assessed the fine that is in a second schedule in the ordinance. And if they do the Boyle District Court, uh, so they will also have to pay court costs? They would have to pay court costs that would go to the court, yes, but the fines retained would go to the city. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Madam Clerk? Commissioner Atkins? Yes. Commissioner Terry? Yes. Mayor Paris? Yes. Commissioner Cottle? Yes. Commissioner Sears? Yes. Um, sure, I'll let you do it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Asked the mayor if he wanted to let you all know why we did a roll call vote, and he said, sure, I could do that. But um, anytime we have the second reading of an ordinance, um, it has to be voted on by roll call, which is what we just did. And I don't know, Stephen, if there's a particular reason for that, but. That's what the statute says. That's what the statute <laughs> says, so Keeps there you go. Middle. We do what we told. Uh, item 11 is resolution 2017-032704. This is the energy efficiency agreement. Uh, Councilor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the resolution before you, um, I think we generally don't read these resolutions and we provide them in summary. And um, because of the importance of this one, I don't intend to read it, but I do think we should spend a little bit more time on it than, than t we typically would be. Some time ago, the commission, uh, through the leadership of the city manager, decided it was important to look at energy efficiency mechanisms um, due to the large cost of energy that the city has in its annual budget. And um, the state law allows municipalities to enter into agreements with contractors to provide guaranteed savings um, based upon the audits that have been done in the city. So the city engaged, um, trained, or accepted their um, request or their proposal submitted, and they performed an audit, and which was presented to you, and a host of energy saving mechanisms, and they have um, proposed changes and energy improvements in the amount of eight million thirty-two thousand dollars to be funded through a twenty-year bond issue. Um, that would generate annual utility savings of $42,951, increase water revenues by almost $400,000, and have maintenance and operational savings of $110,000 for a total amount of savings and increased revenue of $564,951. Or $564, um, so in order to proceed with that, with the implementation of that energy efficiency capital project, um, there is presented to you tonight an energy savings performance agreement uh, with Train USA Incorporated, who we have an individual um, um, here tonight. If you would like to speak um, on that matter, or have any particular questions about the contract, staff has reviewed the contract and recommends its approval um, tonight. I would just note, and I, and I believe this is a corrected version, that there's an exhibit to, uh, exhibit G on page 10 talks about a performance period services and an annual adjustment to the contract. There was an, an annual adjustment rate in the first draft of 2.6% annually that has been revised and tied to the consumer price index as opposed to that 2.6% figure. That's page 10 to 13 of the last section. Of Exhibit G. And that, that is, for the commission, that's the same way your garbage rate is actually adjusted. It's a calculation 
of your CPI on a monthly basis. It's an average on, on the annual basis then compared to the previous year. The net difference becomes a percentage. Uh, and so it'll be a calculated on the same way that the garbage contract would calculate. So it could be higher than 2.6 or it could be less than 2.6. Correct. Whatever that published rate is annually. And that, that big number, $564,951 total savings and increased revenue. That is, is that, guaranteed by yeah. the vendor. Well, I, I want to make sure you said that out loud, guaranteed. And is that an annual number or is that a number over 20 years? That's the total. That's the net return on investment in, in basically in present worth, uh, right. if you look at it in simple terms. Is that fair, Anthony? Correct. So the the annual energy savings of forty two nine five one over the twenty years is going to net us eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars in savings over twenty years. Sure. The bond period. Yes. Yeah. Any motion on this one already? Uh, I think it merits um, for, for the. Young folks in the audience, since you all are pretty ecologically minded, um, we're doing this in order to change out a lot of uh, fixtures uh, in order they, they can become LED uh, and to make the entire energy, heat, air conditioning, etc., more efficient all the way around. Yeah, Mayor, one of your biggest components, and we'll, we'll re reiterate this for the audience, is that you'll be able to collect your water utility readings yeah. from City Hall in the future. So that if you live somewhere, you can call City Hall, they can bring up your 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 water consumption for the last 24 hours, uh, which now we can't do, obviously. And I think the other big thing is if somebody has a water leak, it's usually two or three weeks, <clears throat> before they find it out, and now they've got an $800 water bill, which we're going to wind up absorbing most of it anyway if it's on our side of the meter. Yeah. This would catch that really quickly. Yeah, yeah that's a big deal. Yeah. It's a good win win. Sure. Do I hear a motion? Or did we have a motion? We, have we need a motion. We need a motion. Yeah. I'm, I'm good to go. Resolution. Um, <clears throat> I move that we accept resolution number 2017-03-2704. Thank you, Commissioner Sears. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Any further discussion? I would just like to say one thing, and this is a, doesn't require an amendment. Um, there is in the notice section that any uh, formal notifications required under the contract, it's currently listed that those be sent to the mayor. Um, and we've requested and trainers agreed just to simply change that to the city manager. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and once again, once again for the public, we've spent many hours looking at this and had a lot of good information given to us from by Harshaw Train. We've spent a half a day in a workshop, so uh, you're just seeing a snippet of where we've all already come to. <laughs> What about the import, all the important field trips? Yeah, we took a field trip. Field trip, that was the best part. <clears throat> all the way to Fort Knox. He wouldn't let me smell the gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in which we got to see results. If I, You can correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, but I think that project's in 20 years or better. Is that correct? First, first time about 2000. Yeah. And so what was really interesting in that project was to go into Control Center and watch what's going on. They they know if lights are on or off in buildings around Fort Knox and if there's water leaks and so it's pretty good, pretty good. They also know if uh, air conditioners are using more than they should, which may indicate simply that a window was left open, but it's all about energy savings and that's, that's pretty interesting. Any further comments? Seeing none, Chair, we'll call the question. All in favor of resolution 2017-0327-04, Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Resolution item 12, resolution 2017-032705 is a covenant of courtesy <laughs> which you have read. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to point out the last two items on the agenda are we shouldn't 
pass over the fact that those have been in each several years in development. With the last two votes, really, you're talking about the culmination of 24, 36 months of input by commission and prior commissions and a tremendous amount of, uh, of labor and, and staff hours as well. So they're, they're notable accomplishments tonight that this shouldn't just be glossed over, certainly. Um, so noted, Mr. Dexter. Thank you. Point out too, the, the parks master plan, the last master plan lasted 30 years. And so as we go through public input gathering, as you have an opportunity to provide feedback to the city commission as, as youth that have visited your parks, please do because you're going to guide that path for the next 20 years. And there's a lot of you here that have played sports and, and, and other things, use pedestrian paths, use bike paths, use green space. And so please, as you have an opportunity, provide that feedback because that will, will give the commission direction for a long time. Good point. I, I believe the master plan was done in 98. Is that correct? The master plan for the parks was developed in the mid 90s Millennium Park specific site plan for Millennium Park was done. This this plan was done in the 98 era. This plan is comprehensive citywide. Right. So while we have a small pocket park on Butler Drive, the idea is that you incorporate all of that into a really a parks master plan so that the demand for resources isn't all consolidated into one location so that you, you maximize the green space that you have, Jackson Park, for example, is a 40 acre uh, park owned by the city. And so you, you want to reinvest in all of those resources that you have. Cowan Street on the south side of Pierreville Road is a, is a nice size park also. So there's a, it, it provides it a comprehensive approach to all of the city's green space. And just because most people probably don't know this is we've been approached by a group of citizens to possibly put a park at Henson Park. Um, in the East Main area. So we hope to possibly incorporate that in this plan as well. So we, the focus would be neighborhood parks and not, like you said, not consolidating everything at Millennium. And, and I think those neighborhood parks are really important. So go to Jackson Park and play that beautiful 18 basket disc golf course. <laughs> <laughs> so moving right along to uh, item 12, resolution 2017-032705, covenant of courtesy, Mr. Dexter. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the resolution before you is uh, a culmination of the goals that you espoused at your retreat in February that was successfully um, done to discuss goals for the current year and certain plans and how to most strategically put them into place and implement them. And during a part of that um, process, you developed rules um, for that we would, we affectionately noted by um, the Reverend Amy Moe as a covenant of courtesy. You <laughs> developed one for the day of how, what your conversations would be guided. You liked the idea and decided to develop one on how you would set a, a standard of values and goals for the year on how you would communicate. Not necessarily what you would achieve, but how you would agree to um, conduct yourselves publicly and privately to help add uh, confidence in your governance. And uh, like the last resolution, they are, um, they are important and there are 25 of them that you <clears throat> decided and listed as how you would like to hold yourself out to the public to govern your behavior. I'm happy to, to read those into the record if you would like to. Um, they are also written there and will be available to the public, um, but they're just over a page or about a page long, so I will um, entertain um, your desires on that matter. Do I hear a motion? I'll move for resolution number 2017-03. 2705. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Is there a second? Oh, go ahead. Second. Second, Commissioner Cottle. Yes, sir, Mr. Atkins. I'd like to have a, a legal guy with a read uh, this into the record. Sure. And also, I'd like to offer an amendment uh, before he reads it. Uh, we've all been elected to serve through December 31st, 2018. I'd like to ask us to consider 
changing that 2017 to December 31st, 2018, which covers our proposed tenure of working together. And then my uh, second item is that uh, I don't see uh, any consideration in this document for when a commissioner or a commissioners have violated uh, this proposal. Some of you all have already witnessed our first violation tonight. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> the way they treat, they mistreated the mayor tonight. You know? Okay, we'll go there. I, dis well, that, I disagree with you. That. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to talk about uh, a, a courtesy here, I'm, I, you know, talking about the mayor of Carrick Fergus, what you all didn't add is that her title is called her worship. So, you know, I, I want it written in here, and, 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 and that I'm, that, that's my quit, title. Quit while you're ahead, Mayor. Okay. okay. <laughs> but on a serious note, I would like to see us consider expanding it till the end of our term. Yeah. It says the sure. calendar year of 2017. Sure. I, I'll be happy yeah. to uh, amend that. Okay. Um, we didn't talk about that that day, but it would be nice to go on and do Is that. there a second on that amendment? We'll just treat that yep, as, as a part of it. Okay. Don't y'all laugh if he reads this. So uh, again, the purpose of, the, of this activity was as public officials to help create confidence in the public in the way you govern by stating how you govern. And it aids in transparency and, uh, and positive conduct and also to heighten the decorum not only of the manner in which you act but also the manner in which citizens react with you. So with that said, I'll read them. Uh, the goals are to respect one another, listen to one another, be civil to one another, have civil accountability, make attendance at meetings a priority, value mutual respect, honesty, listening, and civility, be honest and authentic, introduce policy ideas during commissioner comments, and use that time to share any communication that they have had with the city manager between the last meetings, acknowledge and respect that the city manager has the responsibility to make recommendations for administrative policies and procedures, Hold regular meetings on the second and fourth Mondays of each month at 530. Allow any commissioner to add items to the agenda during commissioner comment time for future agendas. Protect commissioner comment time from being a time of debate and discussion or discussion. Allow commissioners to add pressing issues to the agenda by conversing with the city manager and other commissioners prior to the meeting. Seek to share all facts and issues with each other. Prioritize agenda items by agreement at the beginning of meetings. Acknowledge that the primary business of every meeting is to do the city's business and to set policy. Be a welcoming commission that listens to the public before, during, and after meetings. Trust the city manager and city staff to respond to the public's concerns administratively and encourage the public to share their concerns with staff prior to bringing issues to the Board of Commissioners. Hold the city manager accountable for making administrative decisions. Allow communications from the public to be vetted through the city manager prior to a consideration by the Board of Commissioners. Commissioners will have approval of the Board of Commissioners at a meeting prior to addressing the public about new policy initiatives. Acknowledge that commissioners cannot individually communicate city policy on any issue, but only their opinions as an individual regarding same. Value public input on policy positions that come from committee or agency meetings. Share information with the full Board of Commissioners on items that concern the city at a public meeting. Focus on the objective of being a policy-making body. And that's the culmination of your 25 um, covenants of courtesy that we now amended to last through calendar year 2018. I still think we ought to change the mayor title, mayor's title to his worship, but it's all right. You know. I think that may have died for lack of a second later. <laughs> Feel like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it, Mr. Mayor. I want to put it to a vote. <laughs> so I, I have a question to the rest of the commissioners and to you, Stephen. Uh, sure. <clears throat> these are all fine, and we, we act this way anyway, and we probably will agree to, do, to continue to act this way. But what if something uh, does not what if we go wrong in this? Let's go to the ethics committee or? No, this is about self accountability <laughs> or group accountability. Yeah. So if a commissioner, um, for instance, you're agreeing to say we're going to bring new policy ideas and initiatives before the commission as a whole, before they're on an agenda item. 
So if someone gets a hair to um, dog leg or, uh, you know, what's that, dog bird, I lost the, <laughs> whatever that saying is, uh, a particular issue, we're saying the most effective way to do that is to bring it up during commissioner comments, talk about it, and see if the commission wants to proceed with it prior to staff and doing, uh, spending a lot of time, and then you see it in the agenda pack and say, well, where'd this come from? We're saying it's the most effective way to do business. So in the event that something like that happened, a commissioner would validly say, wait, we've agreed to conduct ourselves in this way, and this is the first time I've seen it. This is not in line with the covenant we addressed. I think it'd be more appropriate if we, follow, if we backed up and followed the procedures that we put in place. This is not an ethic, it does not bind you ethically to um, the ethics commission for any violation of these covenants, but it's rightfully um, a document that you're gonna hold each other accountable to holding up. Bird dog. Bird dog, thank you. And, 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 it, and it's Been a good long. document, guys. <laughs> uh, and we should uh, commend ourselves as well as commend the drill sergeant that assisted us in putting this together, because that was a very, uh, fruitful day for all of us it was a very good day none of us yeah. really knew what to expect from that day and um i think we all kind of grumbled a little with what's ron making us do now but um it was it was very good and uh i think we learned a lot about each other and and this is what we came up with about accountability and civility and helping to to do our best for the citizens so what I like about the document is that if the city manager and I and other staff were to sit down and say, how would a, a dream commission operate? It would be the things that are in this list. But the power of that day was that this is a list that you developed. Um, they're your values, they're your covenants. They just so happen to be very good ones. Of course. <laughs> We're the dream team already. <laughs> That's so, an assumption we can't always make, Mayor. So, <laughs> so going forward with each new city commission, will this be something presented to that body? That it, it may could be a new be. body? It could be. It could be also something that would be reviewed at, uh, we hope that city retreats will be a regular ongoing manner and one that w these could be looked at on an annual basis to say, what do we need to keep? What do we need to change? Um, and so it can be each commission's document, so to speak, but through a, a regular adoption process where it's not just something standard and, and last in perpetuity. This first first document of this kind? It is. It's, it's the first time a commission has adopted uh, something like this. It is a city of first. So we need a motion. You have a motion and a second, Mayor. You're ready for a vote. I still think we need He's to change. To to yeah, we need to get that in there. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, I call for the vote. All in favor of resolution 2017-032705, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Scott, I believe we have reason for an executive session tonight. Yes, sir, we do request an executive session for the dual purposes of discussing property acquisition as well as personnel matters. So to our, to our government folks here, um, we are mandated to conduct our business in public, un except under certain circumstances, uh, two of which uh, Mr. Scott has addressed that being uh, personnel, being property acquisition, uh, or legal matters. So um, we have reason to address two out of those three this evening. So, uh, Mr. Atkins, do I hear a motion? No, sir, not from mine. Now, go ahead, Mr. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Atkins. Oh, I'm. Uh, you want? To, <laughs> no, I thought you could do it. Um, I offer a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel, a personnel matter pursuant to KRS 61810-1F and to um, also for a potential real, real property acquisition for which publicity at this present stage might or would likely affect the value per KRS 61810-1B. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Not a call for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. 
To hear a motion that we move back into regular session. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Terry. Second by Commissioner Cardall. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. We are in regular session. Uh, staff would ask that you hire Ian Young and Robert Miller to the position of maintenance worker one in public works department. Do we hear a motion? So, so moved. Second. Third. Whoever. Stereo. <laughs> any, any conversation? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Anything else, Madam Clerk? No. Councilor Dexter. Yes, sir. City Manager Scott. <laughs> You're still Dan not going to called your worship for whatever it was. <laughs> no, don't do Your worshiper. Don't. Worshipness. Your worshipness. <laughs> don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a Duke, Duke of Danville, wasn't it? Yeah. Do not. No, that's already taken. That's already taken. Do not encourage him. Do I, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, we're adjourned. So moved. Thank you for my nice gift.